Protecting the sea from radiation is one of the highest priorities in the management of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station. This video focuses on one of several methods being employed by TEPCO and our partners to prevent contaminated water from reaching the sea, groundwater bypass. Simply put, groundwater bypass is a strategy to intercept groundwater before it can come into contact with radioactivity inside the Fukushima Daiichi facility. Water that is successfully intercepted and remains uncontaminated can be safely sent back on its way to the sea, protected from contact with any contamination. Intercepting and rerouting uncontaminated groundwater is important for two reasons. One, it prevents that water from being contaminated with radiation. And two, it reduces the burden on the Fukushima Daiichi facility to treat and store contaminated water. Storage takes up increasing amounts of space and can be vulnerable to leaks. Groundwater poses a challenge at Fukushima Daiichi for several reasons. First, as you can see in this photograph, the Fukushima Daiichi facility is located at the base of a hillside next to the ocean. Groundwater, like all water, runs downhill. As a result, rain that falls both outside the facility and inside the facility seeps into the ground and then runs downhill toward the sea. Ordinarily, this would pose no problem. But since the accident at Fukushima Daiichi after the March 2011 tsunami, groundwater that enters the facility may become contaminated either by coming into direct contact with the damaged nuclear fuel or by coming into contact with other contamination on the site. Today, some 400 tonnes of groundwater flows into the site buildings every day and becomes contaminated. As this contaminated water accumulates and must be stored on the site, the challenge of cleaning and managing the water grows significantly. The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant says it plans to add more storage tanks for contaminated water by the end of next March. It's a year earlier than the originally scheduled date. TEPCO will increase the capacity of the tanks to up to 800,000 tonnes by March 31st. Currently, tanks at the plant can store about 480,000 tons of radioactive water, but 90% of them are already full. It has been building additional tanks on the southern side of the compound to handle the buildup of contaminated water. The utility says it has accelerated the construction plan and it's now possible to transport prefabricated tanks from manufacturers by ship. TEPCO officials also say they have come up with more efficient ways to build tanks inside the compound. Obviously then, preventing at least some of that water from entering the site is important to reduce the contaminated water. Workers at Fukushima Daiichi will soon start tackling a growing problem in a new way. They'll try to reduce a buildup of contaminated water by releasing groundwater into the ocean. Officials with the government and TAPCO got the consent of fishery cooperatives. Plant workers will pump up groundwater before it gets contaminated with radioactive substances, then discharge it into the ocean. They'll start as soon as next month. Their task will slow a buildup of contaminated water that's stored on the site and hampering the decommissioning process. Officials are promising to ensure radiation levels in groundwater released meets safety standards. They say a third party will be involved in discharging the water and making sure it's safe. Fishery workers gave their consent but still have concerns. We had no choice but to accept this plan. Wait a minute, wait a minute, let me show you something. What? This. Oh. oh, look, I don't want to hurt you. You don't? No. Oh. It's just that it's important to me that you understand. It's essential for the government and Tokyo Electric Power Company to obey all the rules. We are grateful to the Fisheries Federation. 
We'll do everything we've promised and try to gain the understanding of fishery workers. Officials say they need about a month to brief local authorities and analyze groundwater before workers start releasing it. This is the goal of groundwater bypass. Following consultation with the government, several measures against contaminated water are applied or prepared. We are building an impervious wall on the sea side of the buildings to suppress the groundwater outflow to the sea and we will make a wall of the frozen soil around a building to prevent the groundwater inflow to the buildings. Groundwater bypass is one of the countermeasures to keep water away from the sources of contamination. How does groundwater bypass work? As you see in this animation, we will pump up the groundwater on the uphill side of the facility, but we will not divert the water directly to the sea. Instead, to ensure that the water is uncontaminated, we will temporarily store and test it. We will store the water in tanks separate from the ones being used to hold contaminated water. Why might this water be contaminated at all? Rainwater that seeps into the ground may carry some surface radiation with it. In most instances, this is quite low, but TEPCO is committed to ensuring that this bypass water is discharged only when it is clean enough to return to the sea. Its standards are stricter than WHO guidelines on the drinking water. The results of those tests will be promptly posted on the TEPCO website. We felt that putting our users in mortal danger for a quick buck was the right move. Japanese people have always felt a strong connection with the sea, and the country has many aquariums. One of them offers people a unique view of the maritime world. It has just launched an interactive digital aquarium. NHK World's Akane Nakajima joins us live. Akane, what can you tell us? Hi, Catherine. I am at an aquarium located in Kamogawa, Chiba Prefecture. It is just a two-hour drive away from central Tokyo. Now, it's home to more than 800 species. Now, this aquarium says more people are actually visiting during this month. And compared to last March, visitors are actually up 15%. You can see many people are here, actually, and we'll tell you why. Now, usually when you think of an aquarium, you think of a big tank filled with many different types of fish. But take a look at this. This 3D computer graphics reproduce a coral reef. The project manager of this aquarium says it's Japan's first interactive digital aquarium. It was launched in March. Wow, it looks almost real there, Akane. You mentioned the aquarium was interactive. In what way? There's more to it than just watching this animation. Visitors can actually use this interactive panel to play a part in deciding what happens on the screen. Now let me show you. This is an interactive panel. Konnichiwa, hello. Now, usually what you do is you choose a fish. In this case, I chose an Indian mackerel. Now, you would color it in like this. And, let's see, draw an eye. And maybe a few little bit of little characteristics here and there. Once you're done, you press OK. And see how my fish disappears from the panel and it's going to appear. Here we go. Here's my personalized fish swimming. It's going to be swimming along the virtual coil, coral. Oh, it's swimming by itself, actually. Now, when these Indian mackerels um, sense danger, they migrate in groups to protect itself from predators. The virtual aquarium reproduces the behavior of each species. Another example is the relationship between clownfish and sea anemones. They form a type of partnership to protect each other. Now this interactive aspect allows anyone from kids to adults to learn about how the coral reef ecosystem works while also having fun. Now I'm going to ask a parent on their take of the digital aquarium. すいません。こんにちは。こんにちは。実際に体験してみていかがでしょうか。そうですね。あの、子供が選んだ魚がどういった動きをするのかっていうのが画面で見れるので、あの、わかりやすいなって思います。すごい子供は楽しんでやってる
she says that she enjoys watching her child make and design the fish and actually have that appear onto the digital aquarium. She says she learns a lot and she said that her kid is her kid is having so much fun. Thank you so much. Now this space is designed to compare the digital aquarium to the real one. Here's the real life version of the same environment. The coral reefs plays a crucial role in the marine environment. Climate change and other factors mean that they're in danger. Now this interactive aquarium is fun, but the project manager also says that it has a serious purpose. Now it makes people aware of the need to protect the marine environment. Back to you, Catherine. All right, well, learning more about marine life should help one become more aware of that need. And the great thing about a digital aquarium is providing an educational facility without disrupting the environment. Akane, thanks very much for that lovely report. So you think you've got problems? A North Korean representative to the UN has repeated his government's threat to conduct a nuclear test, but he balked at offering details. We will carry out the form of nuclear test. But uh, I recommend you to wait and see what it is. Lee Donil criticized the UN Security Council for condemning a North Korean ballistic missile launch. He called the council's reaction unacceptable. And he said members should be discussing military drills the US and South Korea are conducting on the Korean Peninsula. He said those drills are aggravating tensions. The Japanese government has issued an order to shoot down any incoming missile or debris as it anticipates a possible missile launch by North Korea. Defense Minister Itsunori Onodera issued the order to the self-defense forces on Thursday. North Korea launched two ballistic missiles toward the Sea of Japan on March 26th. The government says it will intercept any missile parts or related debris falling onto Japanese territory in the event of a further launch by the North. The Defense Ministry says the missiles the North fired last month appear to be either the Nodong that has a 1,300 kilometer range or an improved model of the Scud with a range of 300 to 500 kilometers. It says both missiles flew more than 600 kilometers. The government has not made it public that it issued the order. But sources close to the matter say the order will be effective until April 25th, the anniversary of the foundation of the Korean People's Army. They add an Aegis ship is monitoring the situation in the Sea of Japan, but the government will not deploy surface-to-air Pac-3 missile launchers for the time being. The order for missile interception was also issued in April of last year, when the North appeared to be preparing for a missile launch. At that time, Pac-3 were deployed in some parts of the country, in addition to monitoring by Aegis ships in the Sea of Japan.